come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? (laughs) Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. Every Saturday night, the Freak Show happens whether you're ready for it or not. And you can find all of our past episodes on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, and more. Every uh, So what we do is we watch a movie and then we sit around the bar and we talk about it for your listening pleasure. But tonight, because this is Halloween month of October and we love Halloween, we it's do. our yes, favorite we do. time we do. of year. Yes. We've added an extra feature to the, the four shows. Uh, we did one last week, which was uh, Travis's pick, The Bad Seed. You want to go back and you can hear Travis's top favorite horror movies of all time. And tonight, Sean picked the movie, and we're going to listen to Sean's top 10 favorite. But we're going to make you listen to an entire podcast before you get to that. That's right. So you want to stick with us through and after our final wrap-ups. No fast-forwarding. We we all go around the table, and we'll tell you what we thought of the movie at the end of the show. And then Sean will launch into, we'll find out what he considers the best. No, my favorite. favorite. Okay. So what do we, uh, actually, first of all, I should tell you who everybody is. So we're going around the room. Chris. Holly. <laughs> Hairball. Sean. We're, we're not off to a good start. <laughs> All right. And I'm Colin. And tonight, Sean did pick the movie. And what did we watch tonight, Sean? The classic 1993 love story, Return of the Living Dead 3. Was all of that in air quotes that you just said? None of it. None of it in air quotes. You chances. actually, you're like 100% like classic. No, classic? it's not. Oh, it's not. Okay. That's just, just kind of, it's, it's, kinda, it's yeah, ironic. It's yeah. very, yes. It's not. <laughs> All right, so Return of the Living Dead 3. Yes. So there were two Two movies prior to this in the Return of the Living Dead series. The first one, I'll admit, is one of my favorite all-time zombie films. The posters 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 right there in the wall. That's right. Because it was a... They're back uh, from the grave and ready to party. It was unique at the time because it was a... uh, It's like a a, a punk punk, infusion into the Living Dead genre. It has a mixture of comedy and horror and kind of a creepy apocalyptic vibe that Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. was unusual. It also, I think, is... uh, We determined this is the first movie, the original Return of the Living Dead, first movie where zombies run around. uh, Brain zombies. And, yeah, more brains. Yes. Right? Rather than just flesh, they're after brains specifically. Yep. Then there was a the success of that movie generated a Return of the Living Dead Part Two, yeah. where none of the returning uh, creative crew uh, came back. I don't think. I, right? I can't was, imagine why not. <laughs> well, the first one was Dan O'Bannon uh, did it. He wrote and directed it. Dan O'Bannon was a, a genre superstar because he wrote uh, Alien. He uh, participated in John Carpenter's first, first movie, Dark Star. He also wrote Total Recall, uh, Life Force, and mm. you know. I mean, he was a, a a giant in the field. It didn't come back for the second one. He's like, was that's it Ken Niederhorn, to say. right? I think so. Yeah. So how did the third move? So this is so the first one was eighty four, second one's eighty eight, third one's ninety three. How did this movie come about? Well, I don't know. I mean, they just. <laughs> I mean, they really just decided to make another one, but uh, none of the creative crew from either of the first two came back. Um, it's also a clear departure from the previous two because those two are definitely more comedic on purpose, um, especially the second one. The second one is goofy as hell. Mm-hmm. Um, and for the third one, they went and got rid of most of that, and now it's kind of just um, uh, funny on accident. But yeah. it takes a more serious approach. Um, it takes a very much more 90s approach. It's a very 90s movie. It's very um, nihilistic. If you've seen this, it's very angsty. Yes. It's a very black leather. It's very like whatever. <laughs> Fuck you, man. Oh, very very first, grunge. When yes. the movie first starts, we see uh, uh, the lead girl. Her name's Julie. She's played by uh, Mindy or Melinda Clark. She's Mindy in this one, but yes, I think she when she became uh, more serious, she went uh, as Melinda later Did on. Did you find out like what else that we might know her for? I know her from the OC, but that's just me. And I can guarantee <laughs> it's only me, but I know her from Sean the TV show The, the OC. OC. I, I don't know if you knew this much, about I it. I do like The OC. So none of you guys are a fan of the Spawn movie? For God's sake, she was, oh, was the she Jessica one? Priest, the uh, assassin. That, really? uh, I have not seen that movie in four been a hot minute since I remember yeah. Michael Jai White. She's definitely been it. around a lot of uh, bit roles here and there. She yes. was in Firefly. Yes. Uh, she was in um, 
Oh, what was I looking at? I think I remember at? her in Firefly. She was like a madam or something. One of Probably. Oh, yeah, yes. she was. I totally, I, that's where I know her from. Yeah. That's mine. Yeah, that's where I know her from. The whole six episodes of Firefly yeah. or whatever they were. Like 12. Uh, okay, fine. She's definitely been around the L.A. scene for a while. Yeah, and, and she, she does gets little work things. consistently. She's in Gotham now. Mm. Still working, so Still that's working. always a good thing. Yeah. This was her first movie, I believe. Yeah. For she, which she Chris won, pointed out she won the, the what was it, the Fangoria? The, something. She won some sort of award the for chainsaw, it. Chainsaw something? The Chainsaw, the chainsaw. Villain Did you see Award her or something. <laughs> <laughs> it was everywhere in this movie. <laughs> she gave it her deserves all. If you need a zombie Juliet, call Melinda Clark. That's she was Julie. It was Come Julie. On. I, mean, I think. Oh, Sean, that it, what were yeah, they going for there? What was his name? Kurt. Kurt. Not, oh, not okay, quite. Not, not, not quite Julie. Romeo. Not but. quite. Roll off the tongue. Sounds as good, but. <laughs> but when they first introduced this angsty pair, she's seen trying to burn her hand with a yeah. uh, a, ma- a lighter, was it? Yeah. and oh, she's yeah. dressed with like foreshadowing uh, there. Uh, Bridget Fonda's character out of the movie Singles. Mm. Anyone? Anyone? Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah I can see right, that. So or, or, or everybody from 1993. Yeah. 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 You know what was missing from this movie? Any from 93. A good soundtrack? Yeah. The soundtrack. Mm. Yeah. That's true. You expect, yeah, you like the pop song 97. Something, they couldn't right? afford it. No, they really couldn't. <laughs> they couldn't afford <laughs> that's, it. Because that's they legit. took it. Yeah. They couldn't have because they. Took these actors to what looked like the most disgusting parts of L.A. to shoot this movie. Where do you think the budget went for this movie? Makeup Just the zo- Yeah, it had to be. Because like they're the, the first guys the credited at the end of this movie. The zombies that we saw? There were like seven. Mm-hmm. Okay. And they were really good. They were of the... Um, this series tends to go with the more cartoony of mm-hmm. these zombies. You pretty much get the realistic looking ones that look like a dead person actually came back from the dead. And then you get the cartoony ones who's, you know... The one of the first one you're saying the, the realistic ones are from like the Romero movies yes. or something, and then this is like it's like inspired by. You ever seen like were you ever a fan of like uh, Bernie Wrightson, the illustrator? He did a lot of like I mean I don't I can't remember if he was working for. I'd EC. probably know I it if I was. saw it, but. But like EC Comics, Tales from the Crypt right, kind of yes. had the designs that of of zombies. You know that mm-hmm. this these this movie series yes. seems to borrow from liberally, probably yeah mm-hmm. a little bit yeah. But good looking zombies, definitely. Um, that's where the budget, budget went. That's where the budget went, yeah. Because it clearly didn't go in the sets. <laughs> no, in, it did not. In the squares <laughs> that they walk through for most of the movie. Well, it, it takes. Looked, <laughs> it looked like the paneling from inside the Death Star. Yes, that they that's repainted. Exactly, yeah. Paint it orange. Yeah. Something, yes. That's, I think we mentioned it on, uh, what was it, Giver 2? Um, where they go into the cave. Yes. At the one point, you're like, oh, this is this where the is money where went. This is where the budget went, yeah. <laughs> we'll be coming back here and spending a majority of the time. Uh huh. Yeah, but that was impressive though. This was not. Well, this takes place. We're saying that the, the, it's militaristic. It doesn't need to be. Yeah, it's, it's a it's a military just, base where this takes which place. Which is a loose. It, it was only it was only a two million dollar budget. So I mean, I, you, you know, you think about you know day rates and getting your cast and so you've the, got it went to the catering. Some clearances. So, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. But all yeah, the money went sure, to Kent McCord. I'm no. sure at least a quarter of that was zombies. <laughs> That's oh, it fair. Had to be. Yeah, yeah, the prosthetics. Because I don't even know if I would consider them good. Well, maybe we'll get to that. All right. So, what, lay out this movie or take us through this movie. What uh, <laughs> what's going on in Return of the Living Dead Three? How does it connect, first of all, to the original uh, Return of the Living Dead, Return of the Living Dead Two? I think the only connection is the it's the military element and trioxin, two, four, five, oh, right. trioxin. Yeah. Zombies in barrels, I believe, were in the first two. Yeah. The trioxin is a gas that. It was revealed in the first movie, and I think reiterated here, that was created by a chemical company, and there was a spill of this stuff at mm. some point in, like, the early 50s or something for World War II or whatever, and it brought dead people back to life, and then George Romero ripped off the, or he, he made a movie called Night of the Living Dead mm. off, of, this is all the first movie, that's why it's uh, brilliant. But in the first movie, it says that George Romero ripped, you know, this story off. Yeah. And the army told the guy who made the movie, if he told, you know, used the actual names of places, they'd sue his ass off. And so he changed all the names. So these canisters end up, uh, I guess now in this movie, reclaimed by the yes. U.S. government. It appears so. Put in some kind of. Southern California. Wait, it's Los, yeah, Los Angeles. In the middle of Los, it's Los, Los Angeles. It's LA, yeah. If you want to hide Central. something, yeah. really hide is. it in South Central LA. Yeah. That's Where true. Still Nobody wants to go there. Experimenting with this stuff, which is always the fallacy of the government in these movies. Right. We it's can like, control it. Yeah. We can find a way. We got to make a bioweapon. You do. It's all about bioweapons. Right? How do you make a bioweapon out of a zombie? 
I mean, well, you either you do what they an do. An exoskeleton. I, I was gonna say you I could use an exoskeleton. Ex- exoskeleton was <laughs> a very rough hewn like, they, exoskeleton. They're already they're, they're already unkillable, so we're gonna make them unkillable with an exoskeleton. Right. This way, they that lose a limb. They can still sense. keep going. Yeah. This uh, meat batteries is what they called them in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. The the idea I think is that they're gonna like disperse a bunch of zombies into an enemy population and then. They, in this movie, I guess the the new thing that they've invented is the uh, the freeze the, pellet. Yeah, which you shoot into the head of a zombie and it yes. freezes them, so you can put them back on cold right. storage so, again. So uh, what? It freezes the brain activity. That is what uh, uh, it, they're sort of re-energized when they get the gas. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it reignites the brain, and then it freezes them and just it you know, causes freeze. paralysis. Is what sure. Yeah. But see, this is one of the things that like now it's like they're they're going back to uh, there. There's two uh, idea introductions into this movie that that didn't exist in the other ones. Mm. One that if you shoot them in the head, that they can uh, mm. that you can actually put a zombie down. Obviously, you have to do it with a special pellet, but it's still that's going back to the Romero idea. Right. You kill the brain, you kill the body. Right. Mm-hmm. And the Let's second thing that brain. doesn't. Take Moving place the in the other movies. Destroying the brain Sorry. is that they <laughs> by the that it's like an infection by the zombie bite. Yes, mm-hmm. it will transfer the infection onto, and then eventually you're gonna have a bunch of zombies. I think right. that was mm-hmm. you know looking back at the first one, and again my memory on the second one's kind of hazy. So, it's, but it was like you had to be okay. excu- exposed to the gas. It wasn't a communicable disease. It was they got exposed to the gas, and then they became zombies. They in were the going one, resurrecting really? the dead out of the. Didn't some people get bit in that one? Like the, two- the second one? Yeah. I don't remember the second one. I like, just remember he's goofy as shit. I remember uh, James Karen and the other guy came back and played different Tom characters. Tom Matthews. I yeah, and right. came back and played different characters in the second one. Yeah. But, and I, I think I remember them because they event- they slowly turn into zombies throughout the movie. The first in the, one? In the second one. Again? Again. <laughs> Don't you remember the scene where he's like, Brenda, Brenda, let me eat your brains. He's chasing around the church mm-hmm. and his girlfriend. And then she's like, oh, yeah, oh, oh okay. No, that's the second one. What? <laughs> All right. We watched, I, I, I thought watched it was this, movie. Was this also introducing the whole idea that zombies can fight off the infection if they love Clark, a, a young Eddie Furlong lookalike? <laughs> I mean, is this the first Kurt? Sorry, yes, Kurt. Is it was this introduced in part one or part two? Like the power no. of love could overcome zombieitis. No, you save ideas, classic ideas like that for the you know three or four, yeah. the fifth movie. I mean, in that's the of course. You can really Why wouldn't you? Does that mean you have yes. to hold something back? <laughs> Otherwise, what are you gonna do for sequels? <laughs> well, I guess it's the thing. Like, what can we do that's new for a zombie? Uh, you know, another zombie movie. It's right. like, well, it's another thing they introduced then. Yeah, yeah. yeah the that, idea that, that, pain. that somehow, okay, so yeah, and we've the, got like the, the, this guy and girl who are the, the, you know, he's the son of the base military commander. Right. And she's a girl from the wrong side of the tracks. A little bit goth, a little bit crazy. She she's, likes danger. She likes dead things, apparently. Yep. Yeah. She's very turned freaky, on when a dead thing comes back on. to life. No big deal. Let's <laughs> freaky ass let's go shit. have sex now, after we see a dead guy now, come back to life. Honestly, Wait, is this you like don't a, do that? Is this, <laughs> okay, honestly, is this like a thing for you guys? Is that is that normal to be attracted to a girl like that? Yes. Yeah? Oh, yeah. It's wait, wait, crazy. What, that... what part of... <laughs> I need specification on this Not so that I can age judge yeah. you. Oh, the, the wild... The, I'm going to just go with the... Just the no, wild? No, liking the, the crazy dead redhead? From, yeah. Liking, uh, dead, liking dead things is the part that I was really dead, confused no, with. No, no, no. The crazy I, I redhead? Get, I yes. get like the... Yeah. the oh, yes, the crazy tough, redhead. goth redhead. I get that. I do. Whatever. It was the dead part that I was confused about. That's not normal, right? No. Yeah, no. But okay. Everybody's got this. In his defense, okay, he was I'm trying just... to not make her dead anymore. Right. So I'm yeah, she gets killed like... in a in a motorcycle accident. Right. They're gonna leave because the he's uh, because of the failure of his dad's. His dad was in charge of creating the uh, the freeze bullet that puts him back to sleep. So that failed in spectacular fashion, um, and so he gets uh, what relocated in the military. And he tells his son, "It's like nah." We gotta pack up. We're leaving, and he decides he's it's not so going. tragic. Dude. So they tragic. Were, they were just. He wanted to be a down. drummer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in Seattle in yeah. '93. He's never done. Like there before. were none of those. Just, yeah, he just knows like, what he wants. Who's to do. heard of Dave Grohl? <laughs> not the people in these movies, or maybe they have because that's why you know that's, right, that's why they, they were why really big there. Dave Grohl fans. <laughs> yeah, right. So they decide to run away, and they get on their motorcycle, and uh, uh, well, this is tragic, tragic, tragic. Where where? Can my baby be kind of story yeah. where she dies and he has to bring her back to life? She 
smacks a pole yeah. for five minutes and then slides down. <laughs> like in cartoon fashion. Gone. Slides down the pole. Well, he just, he just has a couple scratches, though, which is pretty He impressive. stayed on the bike. It's pretty so impressive. He's got the same three scratches on his forehead that form the three in the title treatment of the oh, movie. Oh and he has them on the back God. of his oh hand. It's like the, the makeup movie. person. Yeah. He has a, the yeah. makeup yeah. person was <laughs> kind of slacking like, up. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> this is all we need. But this is, we were also talking like during the movie that this movie, uh, at least as far as we can tell. So listeners, if uh, if we're wrong, uh, you can you can you prove that we're be. wrong. Uh, write to us at Saturday Night Freak Show at yahoo.com or on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. But we think that this movie predates The Crow for that kind of like, they're going for that goth. Um, Self harm, romantic. Pain. Yeah, romantic. Yeah. And now I'm going to try to, because I'm dead now, I'm going to try to relive my love and make that alive again sort of motif yeah That's is it rope. still around or was that just a thing specifically in that era i of haven't the 90s? seen it except for in the really bad crow remakes sure but i that feels like a straight that that seems like a this that, decade yeah, that type seems of like a yeah that seems like <laughs> that, that it, it's really a part of that era mm. and it doesn't really exist outside of that i don't know if it is out there let us know yeah, the 90s had a darkness that just it was, it hasn't, it hasn't been matched. It's, it's a lot of leather. Yeah, a leather lot and of sunglasses leather. and pale people. Yeah, <laughs> everybody wanted to be vampires. <laughs> so this is before Twilight, right? I mean, I, I think yeah. whatever Stephanie, what's her name? This Twilight author, Stephanie Meyer. Yeah, her Meyer. Meyer. Right? Meyer. She Meyer. lived through Single. the uh, the nineties. There aren't two of them. <laughs> <laughs> so she lived through this decade and wanted to do something, you know, uh, inspired by it, right? Like uh, it feels like that kind of fuels the whole Twilight saga, which right. comes yeah. out in the two thousands, but. She was probably, you know, 90s goth girl, I assume. Oh, oh yeah. Probably. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ah. Yeah. This is one of your favorite movies. Guaranteed. It's like, <laughs> it's like, I love Return of the Living the Three. Well, I was thinking The Crow, but oh, maybe. No, no, it's this movie. movie. It's this movie. <laughs> yeah. Nobody remembers The Crow. They remember Return of the Living Dead 3. <laughs> Have you seen Obviously. that cover art? Her on the cover? How's that forgettable? Ugh. Well, it almost, yeah, it if you have, well, I'm sure you know. Check out our, you know, get our Facebook page, social media. If you haven't seen the uh, the key art for this movie, and you probably have, I mean, yeah, I think that it's a design like kind of in search of the movie to support the design yeah. because it has a very attractive girl with a lot of piercings, which I think also was a thing specific to that era. I I, I, mean, I think it's still here. I really do. But yeah, it's, it's definitely still. Well, the it's cutting, still, I guess, is where it starts, right? Yeah, I, I mean, it's like cutting that graduates to... Yeah, the 90s was, was a big move in romanticizing this self-torture. Mm. I don't think it was quite as... Well, romanticized as it was. I mean, obviously, it, it existed before then, but that's when it really came out as, like, a beautiful, tortured soul. Kind yeah, and there's, there's this whole, like, please, Kurt, let me kill myself because I'm a zombie, and it's just, yeah, really... Too deep for a zombie movie, you know, for at least for my taste. I don't know. It's very angsty. It was very angsty. Very, very, angsty. very, very 90s. There was pouting in this It movie. felt like a pouting. Stone Temple Pilot song. <laughs> Again, I'm saying there was a, a <laughs> giant <laughs> oversight <laughs> yeah, on there somebody's was... part in this movie, oh. not uh, including a soundtrack. Right? Of, yeah. The, I mean, the yeah. crow. The, did, yeah. There's not even a rock song in this movie. Yes. No, there's nothing. There's nothing. Yeah, the crow did like a huge like business off of it. Yeah, the yeah. soundtrack There's may have made more money than the movie. That he's playing yeah. like when they're in his bedroom getting it on when his dad's not home. I don't remember any music. Oh, it was by like Clay or Man or something. <laughs> right. Okay. Was, well, Sean was, was focused elsewhere ever? during that <laughs> yeah. scene. Well, while there was boobs, all the boobs. blood ran out of his head. <laughs> while there was boobs, there was a weird '90s love song that I had never heard. It's by that the band probably, that didn't make right, it. That was right, the yeah. only moment that there was The guy, music. the actor was probably actually in a band. And it was probably his band. Yeah. Probably his band, yeah. <laughs> I'll do it if you play my band's music. Right. It's like, can we get I'll, a band in there? Cool. I'll play the role of Kurt if you play the music. Please. You know, that's what... I, I want to be a drummer in Seattle. I don't know the guy's name, but I did recognize uh, that actor was in a movie called The Lord of Illusions, where in that movie he plays a guy, I think uh, he's like the young version of... Oh, he's he has his eyebrows shaved. I just remember he's at like the beginning when they raid the cult, the compound. Nobody's seen this movie. No, nope. Clive Barker's Lord of Lo Okay, no idea. That'll have to come on the podcast. Clearly, so. but anyway, he plays Kurt, the uh, the Romeo in this uh, duo. Yeah. Brings 
Julie back to life. Literally Julie, yes. Trioxin gas, because Mm -hmm. getting into this facility, if you're the son of the base (laughs) commander... Is ridiculously easy. <laughs> yes, especially when worst. you have a dead woman I leaning up against yeah. you on the back of your motorcycle. The worst military oh, compound I ever. See my dad. Okay. It's like <laughs> go on in. Glad they all know him. Hi, like, kiddo. Hey, my, my dad's in there too. Can I get? Uh, oh no, we can't make this card work. Lick it. <laughs> <laughs> what, you don't do that. What? what is, what's happening tonight? Right. <laughs> I always lick my card before I run into the Walmart <laughs> card reader. Just like, ah. There we go. Well, you do it when it's not it works every when time. It's working. You leave it alone. But if it's not working, apparently you lick it. No, you use a plastic. <laughs> that was the other part of the nineties. Just licking things. That was a big thing as well. Was it? <laughs> it is. Was now, it? Because I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us more, Shots Sean. What childhood. the hell? Were you alive in the nineties? <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, yes, and I remember getting licked a lot. No, I'm. I, I was this the first wow. zombie movie that said they were trying to make a military zombie to fight the war on marijuana. Oh. That I, I thought that was the that funniest was, line in the whole movie. That was great. Like, we must fight the war on marijuana. I we think, must make exoskeleton zombies. Right? Like what was what, that what, about? How the does that threads, work? Well, how does that even for the, help? The marijuana thing was laid in the first movie. I think because it was a pesticide. I think that was what the chemical was designed to do. And this is again, the, you know, lore from another movie. Sure, we must yeah. mellow them out with zombies, yeah. right? Get those like, drug dealers. Yeah. <laughs> spray. Gonna the, send them to sp- Colombia and just be like, <laughs> no, get them. No, wait, you're missing. The, you spray the chemical on the marijuana to kill it, but it didn't. It had a side effect. It created zombies. Oh, I like my thing. Yeah, better, I, they, they just right. send zombies to kill people who are growing marijuana. Well, I, I thought they were doing. Yeah, I thought the zombies were meant to kill the pot dealers. So I'm like, well, what do they do? Oh, that's great. Wait, is this, Blood, can we make a movie out of it? Yes. What would it be called? That would be kind of cool. <laughs> See, copyright. <laughs> <laughs> Reefer Madness. Yeah. 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 Reefer yeah. Madness. Uh, it's got to spell ooh, it differently. Is, zombies. Re- oh, no, we'll yeah. come up with something. <laughs> it's got to be perfect. It's yeah. got to be a perfect title. We'll come up with it. We'll talk about this later. Yeah. <laughs> the endoskeleton thing, which we keep on hinting around, is that Sarah Douglas, uh, who you may remember from Superman 2, she played Ursa, plays yeah. the incoming base commander. Who is determined? She's got a better way of dealing with these uh, the zombie uh, population units, right. the z- zombie units, whatever yes. she calls them, in her control. And yeah, so it has some fucking. This is <coughs> some crazy scheme to put them in an endoskeleton, exoskeleton. right? Exoskeleton. 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 Sorry, outside, yeah, right. It's not outside. inside. Yeah, a metal uh, motorized machine cage that they're. Uh, what's the fucking point of this? Yeah. To keep okay, them standing when you shoot yeah, their leg off. I think that's really the point. Because zombies are really like big bags of mushy, like, being things. She wants to keep them upright and so that they can fight. And she knows a really good Barbara Steele in this. I'm just saying she looks a lot like it. Sounds like it, too. I was thinking Angelica Houston. Okay. Mm-hmm. She reminded me of Angelica Houston. All right, so here's what I think the, the exoskeleton was for. I think that somebody saw aliens... Like the power lifter, yeah, yeah. yeah, and said, "That's how you do it again." <laughs> and that, that was two hundred fifty thousand dollars of the budget right there. <laughs> right. Let's put that guy in an exoskeleton suit. With a man, there's, yeah. There's like designs so on the wall. River of the man exoskeleton, in the exoskeleton. And this guy's yeah. workshop. He's like, "I'm gonna make this," and he's like, "Ta da!" That's uh-huh. the thing we saw in this movie. They're like, "What happened?" <laughs> yeah. I was inspired. Yeah. I don't yeah. know, and it's not even like uh, it's not even electronic. Like in order to sh- quote unquote shut the zombie down, there's a, a a fucking lever on the back that supposedly locks up the system mm-hmm. so they can't move. That's yeah. it. Yeah, like somebody's I'm, supposed I to go. The are they supposed to go in? Clear on like what the purpose of the. I mean, so I you guess, send you know, in fifty of these zombies to go attack this whatever, and then all right, they cleared it out. They're done. They send fifty people in to like go through and just lock yeah. them down, and then get them sun, out of there. See, that fucking... would be a cool zombie movie. Yeah, so, I would try I mean, to fight the exoskeleton zombies by shutting them down, literally, with the little switch on their back. That might be an interesting zombie movie. That's right a lot of... cost you more than $2 million, though. It probably, so, yeah. yeah a lot, lot of exoskeletons. shitty exoskeletons. <laughs> yeah. A lot terrible. of rivermen. Yeah, right. Well, we the... all the rivermen. <laughs> so, so the girl gets re... Uh... Reanimated. 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 Yeah. Reactivated. Reanimated. Reanimated. He made one of the other movies. You can say yeah. it. Let's but here's legal. the distinction that this movie makes again, as we're saying. It's like, is she... I don't know if it's because she was only dead for... A, a short time. A short period of time. That's what I was According to the movie, it was her brain didn't 
die. The electricity didn't like dissipate. In her yeah, brain. Uh, <laughs> that's what. That, oh, it all makes I sense now. It do- I mean, it totally does. Does that not work for you? It works for <laughs> me. And, and as soon as the, the electricity did die, then she would turn on Kurt. But until then, she would be friendly to Kurt because, uh, especially because she yeah, has that a, angelic a Houston memory. chick. She was like. She lo- She recognizes him. There's a love there, so she's not going to attack him. I think he's going to be safe because be she fine. instantly knew that for some reason. Right? Because they have science to back this up. Yeah. They don't. They well, don't. in the in the <laughs> zombie movie uh, pantheon, does this? I'm trying to think of another movie where you have a self aware zombie. Zombie. I mean, besides like. The movie Warm Bodies is like the yeah. flip of this, sure. right? Yeah. Where it's yeah. a girl yeah. instead of a guy. It's the zombie. He starts off as a zombie, yeah. becomes more human. This is yeah. a human who becomes more, more of a zombie. zombie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that the becomes inverse. the thing, I guess, that like the from the screenplay perspective, your tension is going to be that uh, ooh, he's hanging around with her, trying to protect her from the military <laughs> guys. But at some point, she's going to have to eat him. Because yeah. she's a zombie. Yeah, I I almost think that that's a oh, what's that movie where you have to fall asleep? Uh, invasion of the Body Snatchers kind of thing, mm-hmm. where he knows his girlfriend's going to fall asleep and become one of the snatchers, and he's trying to keep her awake up all night. I, I, that might be because it's this mm-hmm. takes place over all one night. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if that's part of this or not, but I I got that vibe from it. Yeah, he doesn't really have a plan though. He's just like we can beat it together, but he's like I have a feeling he has yeah. no idea how. He's By going to Seattle mind. and becoming a drummer. Yeah, right. I mean, that's the it. power of love, dude. Yeah. It's the power of love. Their love is so intense that it's going to be, it's going to keep her from. I can't do it. We can do it together. Yep. Like, as she's lying face down in the LA gutter. Yeah. Yeah. Because of, of course, she eventually wants to kill herself because sure. of the pain. The pain, the hunger, the pain, the, the pain what, of being dead. The part dead. of this movie that grossed me out more than anything else was when she's laying in the LA sewer and he kisses her forehead. E. I'm like that was the grossest part of this whole movie. And you got to Lord knows what right. was in that LA sewer. Uh, they're just they're <laughs> yeah. The shooting locations are disgusting. I got well, that, that, aside that's actually, from the military base where right. the movie mostly. Takes. That's actually the the thing that I liked were the locations, not not necessarily the sets, but the locations. Like you know. Never mind. I'm not gonna, I'm then, going. Ahead, I'm getting ahead of myself. The pretty streets of LA. I, I, I liked right. where they like they, they chose a, a nice spot for the sunset. They chose a nice spot for the sewers. The alleyway. Nice, yeah. You know, like this is supposed to be a gritty part of LA. You know, they they, they chose nice locations. What they did with them on is a different story. But I I, I found that nice. I don't mm-hmm. know. But everything else, well, we I will leave my... a lot of these locations because of a secondary, our subplot. Which our chase, becomes our like, chase movie subplot. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very slow chase. Yeah. We're, we're, we're police shoot Ooh. random the people. The worst police. We shoot <laughs> random people. That's, that's the greatest thing. Yeah. This all starts because uh, I believe she's hungry, of course, as zombies right. are. And they, at the early back, stages, yeah. we don't yeah. know what she's hungry for except everybody in the audience. Does. We are. But Kurt doesn't. So they go to a convenience store, which is then held up by the guy who held up the store in RoboCop. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. And his He's posse. slightly more uh, Spanish, uh, Mexican in this movie. Yeah. Yes. It's like ah, a, the, it's the naive racism of the 90s. The it's like innocent a racism. knockoff of the Latin Kings or something. Basically. Yeah. He throws out like every little uh, Spanish. Fr- yeah, 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 yeah. Very it's stereotypical, it. like, you know. Yes, your L.A. Uh, uh, Mexican gangster. I don't know. Whatever. He's not really. Uh, they're not really. A nineties. A nineties thug. Yeah. Let's just say He's that. He's a homie. Yeah. <laughs> so him and his posse, like you know, they his kill gang of a, three. Uh, Right, with with a random Asian lady. How many people are that that is sick of watching them play video games? (laughs) He wouldn't have gotten level seven if we didn't stick around here. He looks like a forty-five year old man. Why is he just hanging around playing video games (laughs) at a mini mart? Like at a mini mart. You you think a drug dealer would be able to afford a decent home system in the nineties? Come on, drug dealer. I I don't know if he's if he's supposed to be a gangster, like leader of a gang. I don't know. Our own preconceived notions into this. Maybe I'm building. Uh, they are literally just people playing 
video game. Who they're have like, guns they're on them. They're drug dealers. They're part of a gang. We're like, who, who, that's who, just four friends well, hanging do, out, man. They do have weapons. They do have weapons, and they randomly the chase these knife. people throughout. Yeah, he pulls out a gun later. But he no, got it was, from the store guy. Yeah, that oh, was, is that the same oh, gun? That was the store was owner's gun. Oh, I apologize. Look what we're doing to these characters. I, I apologize. Look how bad we're being. <laughs> to the whitewashed his, they Hispanic just character. Oh, my gosh. And maybe steal a little money from the cast. And they do try to steal money from the cast. He did have a He had a knife, sure, but I mean, that is a concealed weapon. That's a concealed weapon. <coughs> Case made. Uh, Boom. There you go. It's not the way they person. treated Riverman made me think they were uh, a bit angry at yeah people well, who might have been rivals. I don't know. Maybe yeah, not. They, I mean, they killed the shopkeeper, and then he was uh, he was going to attempt to be a little rapey with Julie later on, which backfired. Well, I mean, the scene in the convenience store. Um, they have a confrontation with Kurt and Julie. Then we shouldn't stereotype them as gangsters just because they shot somebody and tried <laughs> to rape somebody. That's true. That's unfair. I'm just talking about at this moment in the movie. <laughs> Let's not look at the whole thing. Like, what, are, the, <laughs> what we know at, at, or what we knew in the convenience store. What we know at store. this point. Okay. If you All call right. me essay, I'm going to assume you're a thug. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry. Why would you call me that? Mm-mm. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call you an essay. Exactly. Just don't blame me for it. I didn't do it. Anyway. Um, <laughs> but there's a confrontation in the store um, between uh, Kurt and Julie and the group, we'll call them. Um, and then uh, the uh, store owner comes in, tries to break it up, pulls out his gun when he sees the one guy, Mogo, I believe his name is, behind the register trying to get money out. Um, there's uh, the fight ensues. The one of them was named Santo. Santo. Santo is the Carli- big guy. Carlito was one of them. Was it really? Yeah. <laughs> was Santo. <laughs> if they're not trying, if, they, the if, they're not, if that's not an <laughs> allusion to to a Hispanic a gang member, I don't know what is. Carlito. Uh, <laughs> he had his whole way I in a movie. Say, I mean, come on. <laughs> All right, I take back most of what I said. Yeah. <clears throat> Carlito was the one that was that she bit. Uh, was it? I thought that was yeah. Mogo. No. Well, basically, this serves to, to trigger like the the running plot that's gonna or the side plot that's gonna right. follow on for the rest of this movie, which is because she, the Living Dead girl, Julie, bites. I like Living Dead girl. That's yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so because she bites Mogo in the convenience she store, gets Mogo, Mogo? Sure. Carlito. Sure, I don't care. Right. They like end up chasing these kids to get retribution for the fact that their friend is sick and dying in the back of their car. Instead of going to the hospital to figure well, out what's wrong, I mean, who goes to the hospital anymore? <laughs> no, it was somebody's like, I really, I gotta she get that bit girl, me, man. We gotta get that bitch, and there you go. Yeah, I know Side where they plot went. Established. They went through the sewers. And they came out. There's the, only one way out of that alley. Yeah. Through the sewer. <laughs> what? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, it's like just And he that. knew exactly where it came out, too. Right. Where it Which comes tells out. you a lot about his bridge. backstory. It's always apparently. the Seventh Street Bridge. He spent yeah. a lot of time in the sewers. And there's yeah. only one place they could have gone. Then he should have known Riverman. You think? Right? You All right, who think? the hell is this Riverman that you've been talking about this whole time? Uh, Riverman. He, he is the nice, friendly African American mentor Yoda that they run across who you can lets say them. Hobo. Hobo, yes, homeless hobo hobo Yoda (laughs) figure who gives Kurt some words of wisdom about letting go of his girlfriend because he knows she's dead. And then after he tells Kurt that maybe he can make it as a drummer in Seattle. (laughs) Yeah, you can do it. You You can do it. You can live your dream. You think you can do it? it? That's in your heart, man. You should do it. He tells him, but I'm just a hobo. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm just living in, in a hole in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> this actor, I don't know what his name is, Basil something. He gets Basil. a credit at the beginning, like, and Basil so-and-so as, as Riverman. Riverman. Because, I mean, when you introduce yourself to someone new, just call me Riverman. Yeah. I was hoping they would do, like, a sequel with Riverman. Yeah. Because he was really, I like Riverman, unfortunately. What's his but, real name, you think? Al? I don't know. Kevin? No, probably not. Kevin. Kevin, Kevin from New Orleans. Orleans. What are you Desmond. trying to get me to say? <laughs> <laughs> well, he doesn't want to use his real like. No, I'm just River Man. Man, he's crazy. Yeah, well, he's adopted actor, an identity after living on the streets of L.A. for go. many, many years. He plays street name. this part with wild-eyed enthusiasm. Would yes. I be wrong in saying that? <laughs> no, no not, at all. That's not at all. That's good. Not at all. 
Is he? And yeah. <laughs> maybe, I think maybe, after, maybe. because of his performance, that's why he gets the special credit at the beginning. Like, we need to single this out and thank this man for being who he was. This guy walked off into the night when this movie was over. <laughs> not, they not don't only. know who he was, where he came from. They're just he's like, probably, you're it. No, no. He's probably still living in the sewers of L.A. Right? Underneath where they jumped off that bridge. And he's still got that, like, bio suit, and he just walks around every now and again. <laughs> you can probably oh still God. find him. If you see him in L.A., call him. Yeah, any of Are you the Riverman? Yes, yes like, I am. Go to the don't call me Basil. Bridge. Look for, down the river and see if you can find. He's in river. Compton somewhere, South Central. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, very South Compton. Central. Yeah. So Riverman like uh, gives uh, them some. Uh, uh, sage well, advice. aside from the sage advice, also <laughs> some uh, shelter. Yes, yes. In his amazingly tricked out. This is the thing I always love about. Uh, you know, whatever movies like you live in the sewers, right? The sewer is never like a four by four tube, mm. right? It's like some gargantuan, like twenty-five foot high ceiling. Yeah, it's like nicer than my house. And then he's got like he lives in the pump room where I liked the, the touch where he put like the drape over like mm-hmm. where his little bed was sure. and all that stuff. Oh yeah, oh yeah, he's like got it all yeah, tricked out. out the light and everything. Yeah, yeah, it's not like a smelly hobo's den with no. you know a little campfire thing. Yeah, Ninja Turtles tent. could live there. It's pretty clean. Even his yeah. like his bedding is yeah. really clean. <laughs> uh, the, the, the very Ninja Turtley right there. Yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. It's like wow, this is kind of a nice place. Sometimes, I mean, with all these underground, like yeah, the maid uh, comes on you, Wednesdays. Yeah, I mean, you kind of just want to give up your life above ground and go live and down just, in the sewers because I mean, clearly it's a and not have to interact with people. That sounds like fun. Well, Lex Luthor's got a whole layer down there. It's true. Yeah, that's where the trick done. A penthouse apartment. So does Batman, let me think about it. That's very true. What are we doing? Well, we are underground right (laughs) now. What are we doing? What are we doing? Men caves. We're We're underground. We're We're underground. I gotta come clean. There's no one named Carlito in this movie. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Oh, I take back the taking back of everything I said. And I point to you. Yes. There was a guy. For what you have done. Right I think they did <laughs> say that. Maybe his, they just get you were adamant. His, his, name, his, his was, name is Carlito. His name is Felipe. Felipe. Yes, Felipe. And Mogo was the one who got bit. Mogo got bit. Mogo and <laughs> Felipe. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Oh. Wow, we are awful. Sorry. Well, there we go. See, we anyway, are horrible, horrible people. people. Oh, what I was boy. doing, Riverman's name is uh, Basil Wallace. Basil, Basil Wallace. Basil. <laughs> the Basil Wallace? No, oh, I don't Basil know who that is. He's done a lot. Sir was, Basil you know, Wallace? I read, the cameo that yeah. I most enjoyed was uh, watching uh, um, Walter Powell. I, I don't know what his real name is, but he's from Charles in Charge. Um, obviously, um, he is a, he's been around forever. Uh, he's passed away now. I think he passed away. In, Which one is we see the old He guy? was the, the, the old guy with white hair. Oh, and he, yeah. he played oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, he the dad, familiar. I believe, with the second family in Charles in Charge. Not the first. But the, I think it's the second it's family in Charles in Charge. Charles and and Charles. he is the dad from that show. And he is one of the angry military people in this movie. And oh, you talk about one of those kind of traveling rogue actors who's just in a billion things right. that is definitely uh i think his last name's callahan or callahoon i'm not sure but uh, yeah definitely been around forever around la and again does his his one of his things, things. yeah it's nice to see him getting work well i spotted kent mccord whose name was like kent mccord i must have seen him in some stuff i looked him up i'm sure he's been in some stuff but immediately as soon as i saw predator 2 on his, I'm like, oh shit, he's the fucking police captain and points at, uh, you know, Hardigan, you're out of line doing, yeah, he's that guy. Okay, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, so at this point in the movie, uh, Julie begins to discover that the only way that she can fend off her urges to eat people's brains is to uh, self mutilate. Right. Yeah, pretty much. And this is where we get to the the prosthetic makeup appliance design that adorns the key art of the film. And yes. it's probably the most memorable thing about the movie because she's got, you know, rings going through different parts of her body and pieces of glass sticking yeah. through her face. And she's got a necklace that's going through her skin and, you know. Needles coming through the fingertips. Right. The very Freddy Krueger claws. So it's like they were yep. trying to make an iconic, well, I keep saying the word iconic because it's like lost. It's, you know, but like some kind yep. of uh, very distinct. Distinct, memorable. Mm-hmm. It was before the age of uh, was this you know, like action this? figures, right. but you know something that you would make an action a monster. figure out. Of. Yeah, I'm I'm not a I'm not a, a horror movie 
aficionado. Is this before Hellraiser no, or this after? Is after? This is after? Yeah, this, this, there was very much a lot of the nails put right. into certain. Yeah, it is. Again, yeah the black a lot of it the... felt very influenced by Hellraiser, especially. Sure. I don't know if you, the 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 mouthpieces that they had on the zombies in the lab. Oh, to stop them from biting. That definitely reminded me of Hellraiser. Oh. It's a medical yeah. device or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so sure the one who's got his like, mouth. Yeah, yeah that yeah, reminded me yeah. of Hellraiser for sure, the, the uh, Cenobot. Dental yeah. appliances. Of yeah. Some, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's where real, you know, scary shit happens in the goddamn tennis office. No, um, <laughs> so. That's why the, this guy made two horror movies. Call, call about tennis. that. The dentist, <laughs> yeah. Did we talk See? about Brian Yosna? I don't think so. We don't think we mentioned bit, him no? yet. No, not yet, not yet. Filmography. He's done lots. Uh, like, like. I mean, he's done as, as far as directing. Uh, Bride of Reanimator. He did uh, Silent Beyond Night Reanimator. Dead. He did Beyond after that. Um, Silent Night Deadly Night Four. Whoa. Not his best work. I'm gonna guess because <laughs> it's part four. I think he wrote four and five. Uh, it's Return of the Living Dead Three. Necronomicon. He did some segments. Yeah, yeah. the dentist segments. The not dentist even their whole two. film. Just yeah. segments. Yeah. That was a short. Like, Faust. Whatever. Yeah, Faust, Aaron, based in the comic book. He did a movie. Rottweiler. Well, his uh, his two he claims wrote to Connie fame. I the kids? Yes, because uh, with what? Stuart Gordon, because he and Stuart Gordon he produced the original Reanimator, mm-hmm. and I believe that he worked on a lot of Gordon's films as a producer before splitting off and becoming a director. And then he formed a company called Fantastic Factory mm. and started making movies out of Spain and Faust and Dagon and a couple of, you know, oh, the, Dagon the really? later reanimator movies were uh, all produced under the Fantastic Factory banner. But the second point is that he made a movie that I haven't seen, but a lot of people regard well called Society. That was his mm. first movie. At What's that about? I'm not entirely sure. I think it's like a it's suburban community where people eat each other. I'm not entirely sure. Oh. I haven't seen it. There's melting people. Looks like on the cover art. I'm oh. not I'm sure. I could <laughs> have the, the melting people. Is this part of the melt movies that uh, Street Trash Ugh. represents? And body melt and all uh, that. Yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah, yeah. Entirely, I, I'm so. It was you know. It was 1989. I, I don't remember you know what I read about society. <laughs> but uh, again, listener, if you recommend it maybe we'll check it out yeah let us know so the cutting and the you know yeah. whatever yeah, the, the uh, yeah the self-harm yes was yeah, definitely it's, it's her way of containing the hunger that satiates her. yes yeah so yeah. this all culminates in a big reveal of this makeup where finally she gets to contort her way yeah, very yes. awkwardly yeah. out of you know certain lighted doorways yes the gang finds them Yes, the, oh, the, the, the gang. Shot. No, you just said they're a gang. You just said they were a gang. You've been on us all hour about it not being a gang. Now you, you just called them a gang. You, you know what? Scooby Doo and all his friends, that was a gang as well. <laughs> not using it in a negative way. The group finds them. So, so, the, so the, the sinister group? The evil group finds yeah. them. This ragtag bunch. Mm hmm. <laughs> These darn meddling kids in the sewers, in the sewers, where they murder Ragman. Oh, sorry, River, oh, River Man. Man. <laughs> River Man. They don't. They murder him. No, they don't. No. They shoot him. They okay. Shoot they him. attack Kurt and they River Man, him. and they're like, "Where is she?" And, and then that's and then the she big reveal. Reveals, she opens the big cement metal door to the pipe room and reveals herself in a lot less clothing, but a lot more piercings. Yes. And nobody really thinks this is weird. In fact, it's a turn on for one of the guys. Yeah. He's like, Oh, you're my kind of lady. Right. And decides he's going to take her in the back and probably have his way with her. Now we're not saying it's bad. We're not saying it's rapey. We don't know. I I think it's, I think that was definitely inferred. Well, I got the impression she was enticing him so she could take him back. Yeah. And 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 kill him. And do what she does. I I don't care if it was rapey or not. The point is, what would make you look at a girl that has spikes coming out of her? And think, yeah. Like, oh, there's glass through her yeah. face. I, I think it's because, <laughs> you know, I think it's, it's the moth to flame. I think it's That's because, you know, 14 year old boys like boobs no matter where they find them. I think and if that's they're what exposed and they've got yeah. shit. I think, through them. I think it's like, whoa, boobs. Yeah. And then they're like, wow. You know, they, they don't really see anything else. Well, let's ask Sean because this was his movie pick. And I'm sure Sean, Sean saw oh, this movie I... when he was a wee young lad. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Uh, I think that was a big selling point for this movie. Uh, probably. <laughs> but were you attracted to her in the full no. spike? You get it? 
No, you were horrified. But before. No, you recognize it's no? cool makeup. Before, she's, I mean, she's a good looking woman. But after she gets in like all that. Ugh. She's a monster. She's, she's monster. hideous. And you're like, we have to kill it with fire. Yes. All of them. With That's fire. Good. That's, That's good. No, it's a relief to hear that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. Did we not discuss earlier this was not a thing? Like. Oh no, we're about her obsession with the dead. No, that's not a thing. Yeah. No. I just wanted to make it's sure. Glass through the Okay. No. No, Listeners, it's good. This is not <laughs> No. Hey, what, this is not me. This is, this is not yeah, this, this is, is not who these people are painting me to be. <laughs> <laughs> this is not you why pick I picked this movie. movie. I'm just saying. All right. I did kind of pick it for that though, because that's what but that's into. the stuff you okay. remember. <laughs> Fine. It's what I start cutting myself right here. It's like, it is what I'm into. I love it. But it is memorable. This is Especially true. to a young lad that I was when I first watched this movie. Yeah. No, it's definitely, like I said, it's a design that, you know, when you see it, you're like, huh, that's a striking design. Like, I remember yes. seeing the poster for this, you know, before the movie came out and go, like, what is this? You know? Yeah. And then, you know, once you actually see the movie, it becomes apparent that they really didn't have anything to do with this idea other Not than really here's a look. We're going to OK, this is the look. So we're going to work up to the look. It's yeah. weird that you would there go with a your bit advanced of advertising and show the look. So I guess what the effect of it was is while I was sitting there watching it tonight. You're like, anticipating it. Like, yeah. When is she going to come out in like the full yeah. on, you know, get up that she has on the, the box art? I just yeah. didn't understand what her motivation was, because at first it was just like any shard, anything sharp that she found she was using to cut herself. And I got that. But then all of a sudden she's like making herself into a weapon. I didn't. Like, what motivated that? That seemed really out I of think place. That, I think she was trying to, well, I guess she was saying, you know, the pain, the, I, she's trying to stop the pain. Yes. The pain prevents her from eating brains. Yeah, no, I got that, but, but all why this, so, weaponize it? Yeah, but, but now but she then was she's like, like, oh no, this, this creepy, creepy, um, I guess, um, angry person. I don't want to place any kind of racial nuance on that for Sean's sake. Do that. Um but um th- th- this Keep this clean. rapey guy comes up and he's like, well I, I oh wow I have a knife in my hand who literally not in my hand but through my hand I might as well use it to my advantage. I think she that's also has a rock I yeah, think somehow she taped a rock to her, to her, she did. her yeah. Hand. yeah. And she had like nail claws like so she, she made was, herself right. a so weapon. So she's a highly articulate, high functioning zo- member of the living dead the- because she still loves Kurt. I love drives her. I guess. Well, I say I say Living Dead Legion, but have we established that? Okay, there are actually zombies in this movie that at some point because everybody She never goes full zombie. Well, if you think doesn't. about it, throughout the entire movie, she never goes full zombie. It's very true. Yeah. She's yeah, the the, 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 store, the Korean guy, the store owner, he goes full zombie. He does. Really quickly. Very quickly. From, he must from not love her. anybody. If, if, that, if that's, yeah, if that's exactly. the rule, and he's like, well, you are a heartless <laughs> bastard. You don't love a single soul no, if loves, you turn that quickly. He loves his business, all right? Yeah. And that was just... He, and and now Mo- that my business got Mo- robbed, Mo- right. I'm going to turn into a zombie. If Mo- that's the rule. instantly bitey. Mo-go. As soon as... He, so he really didn't love the Asian lady. But they were all... No. Random they, Asian lady he's hitting bitten. on the that's entire the, movie. That's the distinction with these people. Right. They were bitten. They weren't exposed to the... They weren't killed somehow. And then exposed to the trioxin gas. Right. But that's so if right. It, so I'm not sure I understand like the science. She's like a carrier <laughs> who doesn't uh, have the symptoms for it. It just lives inside her. Right. Like an STD. But, sure. Yes. And so she can transfer that. She's to a carrier. People. Yes. <laughs> there we go. We solved it. Right. That's totally it. That's what's happening. All right. Yeah. It is. <laughs> so there is a zombie outbreak because, uh, I mean, it's a small. But there's a zombie outbreak because Mowgli's going around and like Mowgli, <laughs> <laughs> Mogwai, <laughs> and uh, after midnight, who else? The store owner turns into a zombie. Know, like wandering around biting people. I don't no, know. he was. Uh, he attacked he the cops. He attacked the cops. The yeah. the murderous cops. The mur- yeah, which were awful. Oh my we, gosh. We, we didn't discuss that. I don't think. Yes. Like, Store- hey, your store, your store just got robbed, but because you're in the back of a van, we're going to shoot at you. Right. The police oh show my up gosh. just because an alarm is going off. They know nothing of the situation, what's going on and what's happened. They and just we're, 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 we're going to shoot. They see a van pulling away and they just start firing. At well, this it's, thing. it's Los Angeles in the 90s. Man. <sighs> Maybe. No, this is Chicago know. now. Come on. <laughs> when did Rodney King get beat? Like, when was... That's it. 90- 
Uh, I was going to say 92. It was pretty, yeah, that was pretty awful. So they're not taking any chances. They're not backing down at all. So let's just start shooting him now. Yeah. Just, that was awful. Yeah. The, the, that was awful. The shot store owner is in the back no, of the van. No, he opens the door to the van. Please, <laughs> don't me. shoot. I am, I'm a good guy. And then what do they do? They shoot him. We're going to go ahead and shoot Blow him away. Wow. Which I, I'm works. not armed at all. Which totally works for Julie because she's hungry. Which, which is coincidence, which, which is, is a nice coincidence shooting, for right? Julie. We yeah. had to get to the brain eating. Somehow yeah. we had to expose right. the fact that she has a hunger. And, and those cops just got brains. away with it. Let's talk about the real crime here. Come on. I mean, those cops we never see again. They're like, oh, crap, we just shot an innocent guy. And then later on, like like five minutes later, two new cops. Yeah. Those cops never are seen again. Wait, don't they get murdered? I thought they got. No, eaten then they get eaten. Something. Are, they, are they the One same cops did. later? No, no, they, no, it's two. It's two, two different cops. I thought. No, it's the same cops that. The come ones up, who are and shooting then, and murdering everybody get. Yeah, and then are they the same And two? then it's the military that shows up after that. Because I thought it was a different guy with different glasses and. Yeah. Uh, because one looked like the guy from Chips, and I don't think he got. I don't think he gets eaten. But it wasn't. But that was a different. That wasn't the guy who was shooting at the people in the van. No. No, oh, I think it was two uh, different cops. I think I it was think two different sets of police. Well, uh, he's like, oh no. And then it cuts to a different scene and it's two different. I, maybe I'm wrong. I, I, I'd i have to see the movie. I don't, I, don't think, I don't think we saw him off the bat really well enough to uh, make You have a better recall of this movie than I do. And I just watched it. It was like, <laughs> yep. yeah. But uh, yeah. I could be wrong. <laughs> the, uh, I mean, it culminates in, well, I guess the, the storylines wrap up in that the, uh, the gang become all zombies. They do. Yes. Uh, at the same time, we've got and they in, they great, get, like, in great ways. Like the leader, like oh, when yeah. she takes him in bed. Oh, yeah, yes, the it's one of my zombies. the rapey one of my leader. Favorite, yes, it's yes. one of my favorite designs in this movie because she kills him in the back and then drags him back out, and she has pulled his head and spine not all the way out, but most of the way out of his body and dragged him out into the store. And so now he's like seven feet tall like, instead right. of like six he's feet tall. Then he comes back giraffe. from the dead, and he is. He's zombie giraffe, and he's just his <laughs> head is up above his body. And I always thought that was the coolest thing. I'm like, that is a zombie. Like, that is awesome. He's just like, oh, and his uh, eyes are still working. Like, right? you know, that, I thought that was really And like, cool. they, <clears throat> they board up the door, <clears throat> and like, he can't get through, but he can stick his long head yeah, through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, Ugh. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Oh, it's great. Yeah, My I mean favorite. the zombie makeup. So there's that one that's all melted and its face like comes off to reveal its skull underneath. Right. It. Yeah. Because yeah, that's early on. Early on, it looks like he's got like a, a almost like a an extra person. Yeah, like an extra person growing off of him. Right. Almost, and his arm is like a his one arm tank. is attached to his yeah. chest. And he and literally like and he breaks peels out it off. Of it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. it's great. Yeah. Yeah, and there's a, a zombie. Well, the, the the Asian store owner, he gets his head taken off. So or also she's like, yeah. eating his. So he's got mm -hmm. like the he's so, got the Ray Liotta effect. Yeah, with does, the CG. yeah. Just the top and the brains. Where yeah. sometimes it's the guy for quick shots. Other times it's the, the yeah. very the puppet. The, the puppet looking animatronic. <gasps> yeah. Oh, yeah. Also, yeah. so great it has normal. its moments. It does. You know? In the zombie outbreak, which uh, eventually gets contained and everybody gets brought back to the, uh, the military. Including, moves, including yeah, River Man space. because she decides to eat him. Right. River and, Man. And, because, and then River Man becomes a zombie. See, he, see, he wasn't and that was that was the big brains, turn right. for her. She's like, you know, he's like trying to keep her uh, like a real person. Like, I love you and I'm not going to make I'm not going to let you turn. No. And <laughs> and then he turns on and then she turns on River Man, this guy who helped them like oh my gosh and he just wanted to leave he's like no she's bad we gotta leave he's like behind. she's dead yeah. dude don't know she's crazy and he wouldn't listen and he and then she ends up zombifying river man and river man ends up becoming the test subject for the biomechanical the biomechanical oh you've been waiting for that since we started talking yeah. you oh. listeners. yes we bring out the exoskeleton yeah. for the big showdown it's horrible I know it's just a prototype, <laughs> but it is. It's horrible. It's the worst, like, military. Like, there, I'm sure there's well, military, Everything about the military was pretty awful. It's pretty movie. bad. Like, but there's got to be, like, military funding behind this, and this is what they came up with? Holy shit. <laughs> that's it's like, in trouble. You remember erector sets? That's yes. like what? Okay, yes. That's like, yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, it's like an erector set uh, exoskeleton. Yeah. Yeah. But... Thank God, there's still a little bit. Oh yeah, there's that whole sentimental shit about the. Oh yeah, coin, New Orleans. Like, yeah, pay the coin yes, forward. Yes, yes. Mardi Gras coin. Mm, and that's Mar yeah. how they get like him to focus and get him back. Like, open the door for us so we can get out. Oh yeah, uh, dude, Kurt gets bit in the arm. 
also, so he he's going to become a zombie. As they try to escape. As they try to escape. Because this is the most, like we said before, the most lax security uh, uh, in a military base I've ever seen. Yes. Like, we are about to shut down. Around. Ten, nine, <laughs> yeah. eight. Do we have time for tea? Like, no. All right. Yeah. Seven, <laughs> six, five. Is everybody out? Are we still doing this? One, uh, four. But, no, but they also just let him wander around and tell him everything. Yeah. They're just uh, like, Kurt, I hope you learned your lesson. Now go walk around and watch everything right. we're doing it's so like you can puts, start another problem for us. One of the doctors puts away a file called Military <laughs> Secrets, sets yeah. that down, and then it just goes and tells him, like, yeah, this is what we're doing with them. And, yeah, uh, I remember him like, a, she'll go in there explaining next. to the civilian. Yeah, she's yeah. going yeah. you know, to be a weapon. Yeah, yeah there'll be yeah. weapons, and uh, yeah, that's what we'll do. Oh, yeah, we'll that girl that you dated, people. yeah, she's going to be quite quite the... Yeah. I know you just went through this traumatic experience, but your girlfriend, she's going to be this next. You want to say hi to her? Go ahead. Area 50 one room next. I can show you. We got the aliens here. Did you was know? It Actually, it was just, room it just, was just area. 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 Yeah. Area. <laughs> area. Area. Oh my god. Yeah. Area. But yeah, it doesn't end up well for the young lovers, or does it? Like Romeo and Juliet, oh. they choose suicide yes. together because yes. that's blissful they, love. And, and, they, and they know that they're both going to become zombies, and they would rather not become zombies. If not I got fully bit turned. on the arm and I was going to turn into a zombie. I would not choose to burn to death before that happened. <laughs> no, no. Not, not at all. I would rather just become a zombie. We're fully Where are we going, Or have Kurt? somebody yeah. shoot me in the head. Where are we going? Like, willingly walk into yeah. an incinerator and just burn alive. Fully it's conscious. more romantic just... that way. They were consumed sure. by the flames of the love. Flames of love. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the passion of youth. Yep. We got. They got through it together. And that moment, I think, was a riff on the uh, incinerator scene from Return of the Living Dead. The only thing that was missing is Return of the Living Dead knew to play Rocky Erickson's "Burn the Flames" right. for that comedic effect while it was happening. Here, we still just get the yeah, you get the bad synth score that yeah. you know is the yeah. bane of low budget '90s horror movies where they had MIDI keyboards. Yes. <laughs> Was there anything after? It just goes to like they burn and that's the end of the movie. That's right? it. Yeah, the only person love each other so much. Dad, love each other. Yeah, and there's no aftermath with dad. No, he just looked through the cage with that his poor arm. Guy. No, it wasn't really much. Like... That then, poor, uh, poor man. He's already lost his wife. Now he's lost his job and his son. Yeah, he's not having a good day. That's terrible. No, this is like a day. No, I, well, he didn't lose his job. It's a, his he wife probably died well, early because... that morning in a car accident. <laughs> yeah. This is a day for him. It's a I, bad I, one. I was hoping that the there would be a reveal with mom that maybe mom was a zombie. Like, like she comes out of know, one of the like, barrels. I had to let her go. Here she is. And right? you thought I have to deal it with every day. It all comes back around like yeah, the dad's I'm... love story with the son's love yeah, story. I, oh yeah. my god! Like oh well, now I get it, dad. Now I know why you hate and love mom at the same time. They both embrace the women they love as they all burn to death. But it missed also the the reconciliation with dad. Like I mean that yeah. like was oh, that, really that was heavy. that was True. after what? No 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 that that was before. Because but it didn't really didn't happen. I mean, it was like the dad did it, but it the son re- didn't like really yeah. reciprocate. Right. Where it's they, like you needed the they reconciled the, before he showed him all the military well, secrets. I think I'm point, sorry, he had to kill your your lover son. At that point, now go like, see her because she's a military like, weapon. The son was like, yeah, we can't come back from this. Yeah. It was weird. That whole scene was shot weird too because it stays on the dad. Like, it really is. I made yeah, the joke. Like, yeah. Like, it's going to reveal that his son is tied to a table and he's experimenting on him. But that's how they shot it. Like, yeah. there's supposed yeah. to be yeah. some reveal. Stays on the dad the whole time. The kid, the dad, uh, the kid it's almost it's like, you know, it's it's almost like the reverse shot didn't get developed because so, yeah. they, they must have, like, underdeveloped. Light exposed under, that yeah, one, yeah. Yeah. Overexposed it's it or something. Real. Like, oh, we can't use that can yeah. anymore. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So we'll just keep people. Like, this is the only shot we got. We're not going to reshoot this. It was weird. We spent all our money on prosthetics, people. It was really is he, weird. Is he dead? Is he half? It but... was a it was a reveal shot that nothing was revealed. Yeah. yeah. Like, sure. Oh, it is the sun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Maybe that what was part of it. They didn't know what they wanted to do. Yeah. You know. Well, that pretty flames. much that takes us to the end of. So I think we could have made on a rewrite. I a think better so. Return I think there was three. rewrite opportunities. Oh, yes. There's a whole lot of you know to work with, but you know. There it is. So that's Return of the Living Dead 3? Yep. All right, so uh, there is no mailbag tonight, but we are going to come back with wrap-ups. You're going to hear how we all thought about this movie, but I just want to take a moment to say that you can write to us on Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Go on over to Twitter. What are we on Twitter? Where are we on Twitter? We are at Sat Freak Show. Yeah, we are. And my favorite. the old-fashioned email 
Saturday According night to Colin, show. if you want to yeah, find him on Facebook, come. apparently this is what he loves. Find him on Facebook, friend him, and send him a message. That's how <laughs> Colin does it. Well, you just go to our website. <coughs> message us right there. Or, sorry, our website, uh, Saturday Night Freak Shot Blogs. Oh, shit, com. we have that too. Through any of these magical portals of uh, electronic. Time and space. Yeah, you can contact us and let, you, let us know what you thought of Return of the Living Dead Part 3. Are you attracted to sexy zombies? Who are into cutting? Are let you? us know. Are you? All right, so wait. Are you? Do you hear that sound? The hour has come, sirs. Thank you, Lurk. Lurk, uh, by the way, uh, Chris, that's our butler. Don't uh, don't look at him. Don't, don't make look. eye contact. Oh, wow. yeah. Sorry. It's, uh. It won't end well. Thanks, Lurk. His only function is to let us know that it's time to do the wrap-up. So that means we're going to go around the table, and then who are we going to start with? I think we're going to start th- with Colin. I think we're going to start with Colin. Colin! Uh, uh, <laughs> um, okay, so let's see. Uh, I went into this movie with low expectations. I had seen it once before. It was when it first came out. I don't remember a damn thing about it, except there was military zombies and a sexy girl with a bunch of shit in her face. And that was Pulp Fiction reference there. <laughs> um, <laughs> so... I'd bring an ODing bitch to your house, then I'll give her the shot. Tell yeah. me, you're giving her the shot. <laughs> so what I got was, uh, I don't know, a flatly directed, uh, very, very cheap, uh, seemingly direct-to-video movie. I don't think it had a theatrical release around here. And, yeah. I mean, we were, you know, thinking maybe it had a, you know, release One somewhere. Two, yeah. Yeah, uh, L.A. or New York. Um <clears throat> It adds a couple of wrinkles to the zombie formula, I suppose. Uh, you know, the ro- the idea of, like, you know, how long can, you know, love, la- like, love is the thing that's saving the deterioration, the progression of the disease. You can fight the disease. If you just love hard enough, love strong enough. Oh, One yeah. of those. Love strong enough. Is that a is song? Your yeah, love song. Strong is enough? your love strong enough? There you go. There's a legend callback. Yeah. All these I'm surprised they didn't get Celine Dion for this. Again, missed Anything. opportunity. It was, Anything, early, it was early in her career. They probably no, could have afforded was, her. No, she was big already. There was really? a Titanic. There was a Titanic. It was before it was pre Titanic. Like, no, he was no, doing. No, um, yeah, no she had, this was. Uh, it was very Titanic. She had big hit. She did that hit for the Robert Redford movie with Michelle Pfeiffer. She was already big. Really, ninety three. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought that was still kind of early on when she was. Hey, kind of creepy with her with her manager. Selena is timeless. timeless. Well, wait. Titanic was ninety six. She was a thing before that, right? Was she, was, she was. Yeah, yeah, she was. Her saying. first she, hit was in the yeah. early nineties. Maybe she, yeah, that one she, song. She did, uh, uh, I didn't think she oh, was. Oh, it was from big. Up Close and Personal. She did the song from Up Close and Personal with Robert Redford, and that was in like ninety two. Okay, All maybe right. she was. Yeah. She was already My bad. Big. My bad. All right. So, yeah, we're saying it missed the boat on, I don't know about Celine Dion, but at least some kind of soundtrack. You you it's, trumped me on your Celine Dion knowledge. I, yeah. I, I stand corrected. Yeah. I guess this is one of the things where it's like, how do you grade this movie? It, you know, first of all, with the, for the franchise title name of Return of the Living Dead, and God knows that, that there's one good Return of the Living Dead movie, the first one. The second one, from what I remember and from what you know, I hear is pretty poor. This one is pretty poor. The then there's a fourth and a fifth one. There's Necropolis, the fourth one, and right. Rave to the Grave, right. the <laughs> fifth one. And I haven't gone anywhere near them. I haven't seen a trailer. I don't care because I know that they're gonna suck. They're just like mm. some places you just don't want to go. And uh, I like the first one so much that you know anything else is kind of riding on the coattails of the name. Uh, is blasphemy, but okay, it does have a cool looking monster. This movie, I'll give it that. And the zombie creations by I think Steve Johnson was the guy's name, I think so who gets was, the first credit after the film ends, right? Which because, tells you a lot, yeah. That's where their budget went. Uh, isn't the, the zombie stuff isn't horrible, but I mean, let's face it, folks, especially, I mean, maybe in the 90s, you know, zombies were still kind of uh, n- not new, but you know, like. A once in a while kind of thing. Well, even right. they've, they've gone direct to video at this point. And then, you know, came the tidal wave of shit in the 2000s where now it's like, let's face it, you have seen this stuff done better and more often ad nauseum. You don't need to go back and check out The Return of the Living Dead 3. You have better options at this point. Just go buy a poster. And I think, or to look up a picture of Mindy Clark in the makeup on the internet. And that's pretty much the best experience that you can have 
right. Uh, yeah, I, as much as I am a 90s fan, having grown up in that era, I think I'm the oldest amongst all of you guys. Uh, and as much as I, I have a... Uh, have an attraction to redheads having been married to one for quite some time now who is this a 90s chick video. oh yeah yeah I, I, I you know mindy she's what was her name mindy, clark. Mindy, mindy clark. clark oh wow she she's uh she's certainly cute um wow this, this just is so outside of my wheelhouse that it had so many things against it to begin with because zombie movies aren't really my thing to begin with um I guess the only thing good I can say about it is it had good use of its locations. I thought that added, I guess, interesting bits of uh, of realism, um, which I guess isn't necessarily the point of a zombie movie. <laughs> but um, no, I, I I think all can be told with the brilliant writing when dad catches <laughs> oh, that was air quotes son. i saw them air quotes uh, when, when dad eyes. catches son his eyes fluttered like this it, in bed with with mindy clark and son goes to dad and closes the door on dad and turns to mindy clark and says i think he knows something <laughs> like uh, yeah I, i'm sure he does because you know we were just doing it in his bed um it just there's so many bad things with this, I, I can't imagine why you'd want to watch it. <laughs> I really can't. <laughs> Unless you're in for a good laugh. I, I mean, honestly, that's really about it. Or like a zombie movie completionist or something, right? But this is still... Is that even possible? At, at this point, yeah. can you so even many. be a completionist with a zombie movie? <laughs> that's very hard. That's, that's a, a job in itself. <laughs> um. Yeah, no, this was... This was hard to watch. Um... <laughs> It was long. Was it was it, only 93 minutes and yeah. it felt long. It felt really long. It was it was hard to get through. Um, and I do like a good zombie movie. Um, I did enjoy the actual zombies when they finally showed up because it took a while. But yeah, the prosthetics were good. It was decent effects. Um, not... I wouldn't say they were the best by any means, but they were they were entertaining. The script was atrocious. I, the dialogue was just laughable, literally, because that was, I think, the only thing that made us laugh was how bad some of the lines were. Like you said, I think I think he knows something. Yeah, yeah, we get it. He knows. Um, no, it was the scene where they broke up. Uh, that was like one of the. Oh best. God! Oh, the yeah. He was oh. actually pouting. Sean mentioned that he was he is, actually pouting. He turned and like. He's like, I find you disgusting now. <laughs> what? Because you're he a regretted. zombie. He She's a zombie. It, okay. Yes. <laughs> he felt bad. Yeah. <laughs> he felt bad. <clears throat> I I mean I, yeah I think and like the the love aspect the 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 bond the love that was kind of that that was an insult to romance I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I guess the big question, you being the, the Stephanie Meyer fan, is is it a better? I'm not a Stephanie oh, Meyer fan. Oh, that was no, you. No, uh, no, 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 that was you. I, oh, I, 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 I think stand Chris is the one just like <laughs> yeah. putting labels no, on people. No, I apologize. No, to. I I inferred too much. I apologize. I apologize. <laughs> no, <laughs> this, this is a podcast where we inferred a lot. In no, podcast. yes, we did incorrectly. Did. We're all guilty you, of it sir. tonight. <laughs> no, my bad. My bad. I, I, I retract that that previous comment. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, um, yeah, I thought this movie sucked. It was hard to get through. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sean. I my own right. my only question to lead into your wrap up is why did you pick this and not the first two? <laughs> well, it's the summer of prequels or sequels? The fall of prequels. The fall of prequels. <laughs> well, why I picked this movie is because I think. Uh, when I was younger, I mean, this one is the one out of this series that got the most play on television by far. I've seen, uh, it was probably me and my brothers. We, I think we marathon the return of the living dead one night, one, two, and three. Um, I, I really, uh, I really enjoy the first one. The second one is, um, I mean, being at such a young age, I enjoyed it too. It is goofy as shit. Uh, some of the stuff they do in there, but it is memorable to me. This one is, um, I mean, it was a staple of my childhood growing up. It was everywhere. And that uh, just that cover art and the things that I mean, the pros for this movie for me are zombie design, which I really enjoyed. Um, 
the story is. I mean, that's basically, that's basically it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's legit. But, that's but, legit. But, but it does. I mean, it does. There should have been. The problem with this movie is there should have been way more of that in this movie. There's a gap in the uh, in the middle. You get a little bit of zombie at the beginning, and a lot more in the last like probably ten minutes of it. In the middle, it is a lot of uh, it's a lot of angst. Um, a lot of just love story and you know for a zombie movie that makes it feel long for only an hour and a half movie it does kind of drag it out a little bit Um, but that zombie design and what they do with it made such an impact on me I mean that's what that's what drew me to uh, bring it here tonight to watch it again because I haven't seen it in a while that is what uh, entertains me about this movie I completely understand people who do not like this. Um, I think another good part of it is you have to watch it now as something to laugh at. Because mm-hmm. to take this movie seriously, I mean, my God, it is so angsty and so 90s and there's so much black leather. <laughs> it's Sometimes you can't kind of stand it. Um, I would, but to me, I think there's enough. Uh, I, I would go back and watch it for... Uh, mostly the zombie parts. And I may, those might be the only parts that I would watch it for. Like, I'd watch the beginning and I'd watch the end and then I'd probably be out. Um, That's fair. I, I mean, I recommend it in as, like, I'll watch this again. Um, so, and I guess in that regard, I recommend it. Um, but don't go into it trying to take it seriously. Um, you kind of have to laugh at this movie. And I think if you're willing to go into it um, and not take it too seriously, you can enjoy it. Um, I think there's enough in it for me that I recommend it. I give it uh, two point five barrels of trioxin out of five barrels of trioxin. <laughs> I think anytime, anytime anyone ever said when I ask them why they like a movie, anytime they say it's nostalgia, instant pass. I'm like, mm. I get it. Like, I have no argument. I'm like, yeah, I get it. Nostalgia is like the biggest impact of movies. I think it really. I is. mean, it's 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 one of the biggest ones. Yeah. But the uh, but there the certain elements still shine through for me. Mm-hmm. That even once you get past the nostalgia. Yeah. Um, I can still enjoy those aspects. Of this I, I appreciate, and, uh, I guess maybe this isn't me defending the film at all. No. <laughs> I appreciate some of the gusto of, of the actors involved. I mean, I, sure. I really think Mindy Clark she earned her gave paycheck. it a shot. She, she, yeah, she, yeah, she really did <laughs> she going through the all. realms, you know, going through the waves of emotions that that character goes through. Yes. Um, and I, I think they really all gave it a, their best shot. I, I, I guess it I would have been fun to shoot too. Yeah. Cause I'm sure they thought it was so, kind of ridiculous. Yeah. I don't right. think they thought they were reestablishing like we make a the zombie genre. movie and look at these prosthetics. Right. And- yeah. Uh, I, if I could propose one question to you guys, and maybe this is outside of, of my, my realm here. Is this a better movie than Twilight? Of course. <laughs> which I have not twi- seen, which Twilight? I have not seen. I, I don't know and because I, I don't know Twilight. I, I'll be honest. I didn't even know there was more than one. You know, to be honest with you, I didn't think the. Fr- I saw the first Twilight before I was aware that there was a Twilight phenomenon, and it wasn't awful. It was just insulting. And, you know, <laughs> like the movie's not bad. It's just like it's vampires. So I'm like, I'm in, I got to see it. It's got vampires in it. And then they give you this thing that is not really a vampire. It's more like a superhero for girls. Okay. You know, so it's like, a bad thing. Girl. He's a, a bad sparkly thing. vampire who doesn't drink blood and has superhuman strength and can run real fast and does cool stuff for the girl in his life. He drinks blood <clears throat> of animals. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And who was the uh, Stephanie Meyer? Not a, fan. A oh, I'm not a fan. I just know vampire. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, sometimes you know things and you're just like, I just know it. I don't like I've, it. I've I just, seen all the movies. I, I just don't know enjoy these them. <laughs> yeah, I remember hating whatever. I'm the, not one, I think the ones that came after were just like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. So was this better or worse than Twilight? I. That's a fucking good question, man. <laughs> better? <laughs> As in which one you would rather suffer through again? I guess I would rather suffer through this one. <laughs> I don't think it necessarily is better made. Right. Yeah. I <laughs> do <laughs> I'll suffer through this ending. I think I'd rather sit through Twilight. Oh, my God. There you go. I'm sorry. This How felt so you? long. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of long, we've run long. And I know we, we promised you something. Oh, shit. I almost forgot listeners, about this. That we're going to find out Sean's top 10 favorite horror films of all time. In Next no week, particular. you're going to get uh, Holly's, and <laughs> you'll wrap up the month with mine. So, Sean. I think you planned in- this. No, it was an accident. But uh, you may or b- believe that or not. Um, so you, no particular order. No particular right. order in an ever-changing list. I like the amount of work that you put into this. I, I mean, I, I can't, were you insulting me? I can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> like, you don't know what work I put into this. Shut up. 
What are you saying? But All there's right. a ranking system is you got to make decisions. Cold, hard, fucking. Travis yeah, didn't. Your... Okay, fine. You gonna, are you going to name your number one favorite movie of all time? That's what I, Never That's what I thought the fucking rules were. I can't were. do that. No. We... Ten through one, you count backwards. Okay. I can't do that. Come on. It's ever changing. No, I can't, I can't at, make those commitments. At, at least give us like your top three then. When you get there. When you get there. I'm going to go through all of them and then maybe I'll pick out the top three. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, Here we go. Fright Night. Uh, mm-hmm. One of my favorites. Mm-hmm. Uh, the poster's uh, on the wall. Look at that. Oh, yeah. yep. Right is, behind uh, you. Totally rewatchable. Um, love that movie. It, it's, it's, it's my favorite vampire movie. I'm not a big fan of vampire movies, but that's my favorite one. Uh, the Thing. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Silence of the Lambs. Mm-hmm. That's good, good choice. One. Good choice. I like that one. Uh, Night of the Living Dead. Mm-hmm. The, the Tom Savini one. What the yeah. fuck? I'm not. What? Now, I'm not saying anything about the original. <laughs> I'm taking away your beer card. I'm not saying anything about the original. I'm saying what I love, and it is Night of the Living Dead with Tony Todd. I love that movie. Shut up. <laughs> you can all go to hell. Uh, Scream Two. Visit previous podcasts to right. see. Okay, our on okay. I, I uh, hope Scream One's on there somewhere. Then I like Scream Two better than Scream One. Oh, <laughs> I know it's weird, isn't it? Yeah, it is very weird. I have totally yes. odd taste. That is very Revisit weird. That episode is, of the podcast because yeah. yeah. it's a good episode. It this is, is good. why I we're get... not doing the best horror movie. <laughs> Ex- well, yes. exactly. Yes, exactly. This is okay. favorites, okay. not best. Okay, okay. I, I uh, hear you. Personal I hear you. favorites. Yeah. Personal favorites. Stuff I go back and rewatch. Uh, the Blair Witch Project. Okay. Mm-hmm. Watched it recently because the new one was coming out and it still had an effect on me. Mm-hmm. Um, I still love watching that movie, so that's definitely on the list. Um, uh, Friday the 13th Part 6. I think it's the one in the series now. Um, there's a lot of them in there that are good and I love going back and rewatching. I think it's the one I go back to and rewatch the most. That's also uh, the one I grew up with. I mean, it might have been one of the first ones I saw. But that one is uh, one of my favorites of the series. It's the movie that changed 80s horror films. Did it, did it change it? I mean, it's got fucking so. Alice Cooper on the soundtrack. Right, it's yeah. Really and good. added heavy metal to horror movies. Again, yeah. soundtrack. Yeah. Yes. Sound, it's a big thing. Like, horror yes. movie, give me a soundtrack. It yes. also had the self-aware kind of scream. Wouldn't have existed without Friday the 13th Part 6. You don't think so? I mean, it was the first, I mean, right? The self-aware. Being self-aware. Yeah, of what they was... were aware, like, any, i am seen enough horror movies to know any weirdo wearing a mask is never, never friendly. Never friendly, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. There were student Very bodies true. before that, but, you know, I'm not counting. But we're splitting hairs at that oh, point. Yeah. Uh, uh, Halloween 4. I think, I mean, I could name a number of the Halloween series. It's my favorite series. That's just you're weird, dude. No. <laughs> I mean, but I, I mean, can't I get like Friday Six, but Halloween Four. I really like that movie. Now, like I said, it's Halloween One. I mean, obviously, it's should have given me more sc- shit about Scream Two. At least I could probably. see Halloween Four. I suppose. But. <laughs> probably, but Halloween, like I, that's. I mean, it gets back to uh, what I love about that series. You know, it's Michael Myers running around Haddonfield at night. And, like, it almost, it takes it back to basics. I mean, they kind of had to because he was gone for the previous movie. But it takes it back to basics. And I love it about it. It's just people in their houses at night fucking worried about Michael Myers running around. No, I love that movie. Um, I could have said part five. How would you have felt about that? Do you legitimately like part five? (laughs) I mean, I like it. I know it's not uh, regarded as the best sequel. And it has major, major problems. Yeah. But I'm um, again. Halloween's my favorite series. I like the stuff with the barn, I think. Or the barn, the, the tower farm. Right, they go to yeah. the tower farm and have the party it's very and everything. Atmospheric, yeah. yeah. Very Halloweeny autumn. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, nice trick or treat. Adjective. Not yours. Oh come on! Why would you think I would pick yours? Why uh, would you think? Because it's awesome. I mean, I'm sure it is. Because <laughs> it's fucking rock. I miss it. it. Literally, it literally rocks. Yeah. But uh, Trick or Treat, um, that's one of my favorites. And uh, finally, The Fly, David Cronenberg's The Fly. Uh, Just watching that earlier today because I was like, ooh, I'll watch that again. Jeffrey, yeah, that's a good uh, movie. Jeffrey Goldblum, Goldblum in and of himself is creepy. Enough. Uh, very much so. Yeah. I and, that's so. a movie that often gets overlooked, unfortunately. I mean, you know, there's those movies that mm-hmm. you were big deals in horror at the mm-hmm. time. 
that as time goes on, it's like fewer and fewer people seem to have seen them. Right. Mm-hmm. And the fly is one of those. And it's like, man, I mean, that's a really good. Right. That seems kind of criminal. Like that's a that's a good good story. Mm-hmm. Good acting all around, yeah. and just the effects on it too are just oh. Mm-hmm. Yep. The fly. I think there was a music. There was a music. That would be. I an believe so. Yeah. Road trip. Really? Yeah. Kind of based off of the Cronenberg. Oh version yeah. Of it? Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. I think it maybe still used the Howard Shore score. You yeah. Have to look hmm. this up. I don't know why I'm thinking this, but yeah. I wow, there was. I had no idea they would make a school. Uh, uh, that would be fly really music. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, there it is. It's our ten. All right, so there well, it is. You're going to give us your top three. Yeah, oh shit! Yeah. Someone yeah. forget about that. Um, if you're going to rank them, going to rank them. I'm going to say three horror movies. Three horror movies. <clears throat> Fright Night, Scream Two, <laughs> and I'm picking Halloween Four just kind of as a stand-in for the whole Halloween series. I have to. <laughs> I'm disappointed <laughs> that they all outrank Friday the Thirteenth Part Six. But okay. So that's it was uh, in my top ten. Fuck you. <laughs> but there it is. That's my ten. Uh Sean's top ten. Again, Travis's top ten was on the bad seat episode. And you're gonna hear Holly's top ten on next week's episode. What are we gonna watch next week? Next Holly? week we are watching Cabin in the Woods. Cabin ah, in the Joss Whedon's yeah. Cabin in or even no Drew Goddard's. Drew Sorry. Goddard. Yeah. And but Joss Whedon. And Joss Whedon. Come on. Yeah, yeah he wrote it. <laughs> he wrote it. Yeah. All right, so that's next week. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.